<clears throat> the Adventures of a Jackal from the Orange Fairy Book. In a country which is full of wild beasts of all sorts, there once lived a jackal and a hedgehog, and unlike though they were, the two animals made great friends and were often seen in each other's company. One afternoon, they were walking along the road together, when the jackal, who was the tall of the two, exclaimed, Hey, there's a barn full of corn. Let's go and eat some. Let us do it, answered the hedgehog. And they went to the barn and ate till they could eat no more. Then the jackal put on his shoes, which he had taken off as to make no noise, and they returned to the high road. Jackals have shoes? Hmm. After they had gone some way, and they met a panther, who stopped and, bowing politely, said, Excuse my speaking to you, but I cannot help admiring those shoes of yours. Do you mind telling me who made them? Yes, I think they are rather nice, answered the jackal. I made them myself, though. Could you make me a pair like them? asked the panther eagerly. I will do my best, of course, replied the jackal. But you must kill me a cow, and then we have eaten the flesh. I will take the skin and make your shoes out of it. So the panther prowled until he saw a fine cow gazing apart from the rest of the herd. He killed it instantly, and then gave a cry to the jackal and the hedgehog to come to the place where he was. They soon skinned the dead beast and spread its skin out to dry, after which they had a grand feast before they curled themselves up for the night and slept quite soundly. Next morning the jackal got up early and set to work upon the shoes while the panther sat by and looked on with delight. At last they were finished, and the jackal arose and stretched himself. Now go and lay them in the sun out there, he said. In a couple of hours they will be ready to put on. But do not attempt to wear them before, or you will feel the most uncomfortable. But I see the sun is high in the heavens, and we must be continuing on our journey. The panther, who always believed what everyone told him, did exactly as he was bid. And in two hours' time, he had began to fasten the shoes. He was certain to set off his paws wonderfully, and stretched out his forepaws and looked at them with pride. But when he tried to walk, ah, that was another story. They were so stiff and hard that he nearly shrieked with every step he took. And at last he shrank down where he was and began to actually cry. After some time, some little partridges who were hopping by heard the panther's poor groans, and went up to see what was the matter. He had never tried to make his dinner of them, and they had always been quite friendly. You seem in pain, said one of them, fluttering close to him. Can we help you? Oh, it was the jackal! It made me these shoes. They're so hard and tight that they hurt my feet. I cannot manage to kick them off. Lie still and we will soften them, answered the kind little partridge. And calling to his brothers, they all flew to the nearest spring and carried water in their beaks, which they poured over the shoes. This they did till the leather grew soft, and the panther was able to slip out of his feet out of them. Oh, thank you, thank you, he cried, skipping around with joy. I feel a different creature. Now I will go after the jackal and pay him my debts. And he bounded away into the forest. But the jackal had been very cunning, and had trotted backwards and forwards and in and out, so that it was very difficult to know which track he had really followed. At length, however, the panther caught sight of his enemy, and at the same time the jackal had caught sight of him. The panther gave a loud roar and sprang forward. 
but the jackal was too quick for him and plunged into a dense thicket where the panther could not follow. Disgusted with his failure and more angry than ever, the panther lay down for a while to consider what he should do next. And as he was thinking, an old man came by. Oh, father, tell me how I can repay the jackal for the way he has served me. And without more ado, he told his story. Oh, you can take my advice, answered the old man. You will kill a cow and invite all the jackals in the forest to the feast. Watch them carefully while they were eating, and you will see that most of them keep their eyes on their food. But if one of them glances at you, you will know that he was the traitor. Sound advice. The panther, whose manners were always good, thanked the old man and followed his counsel. The cow was killed and the partridges flew about with invitations to the jackals, who gathered in large numbers to the feast. The wicked jackal came among them, but as the panther had only seen him once, he could not distinguish him from the rest. However, they all took their places on wooden seats placed around the dead cow, which was laid across the boughs of a fallen tree, and began their dinner, each jackal fixing his eyes greedily on the piece of meat before him. Only one of them seemed uneasy, and every now and then he glanced in the direction of his host. The panther noticed and suddenly made a bound for the culprit and seized his tail. But again, the jackal was too quick for him, and catching up a knife, he cut off his tail and darted into the forest, followed by all the rest of the party. And before the panther had recovered from his surprise, he found himself alone. What am I to do now? Yes, the old man who came back to see how things had turned out. It is very unfortunate, certainly, answered he, but I think I know where you can find him. There is a melon garden about two miles from here, and his jackals are very fond of melons. <laughs> they are nearly sure to have gone there to feed. If you see a tailless jackal, you will know that he is the one you want. So the panther thanked him and went on his way. Now the jackal had guessed what advice the old man would give his enemy, and so, while his friends were greedily eating the ripest melons on the sunniest corner of the garden, he stole behind them and tied their tails together. He had only finished when his ears caught the sound of breaking branches and cried, Quick! Quick! Here comes the master of the garden! And the jackal sprang up and ran away in all directions, leaving their tails behind them. And how was the panther to know which was his enemy? None of them had any tails, he said to the old man. I am tired of hunting them. I shall leave them alone and go and catch something for my supper. Of course, the hedgehog had not been able to take part in any of these adventures, but as soon as all danger was over, the jackal went to look for his friend, whom he was lucky enough to find at home. Ah, there you are, he said gaily. I have lost my tail since I saw you last, and other people have lost theirs too, but that is no matter. I am hungry, so come with me to the shepherd who is sitting over there, and we will ask him to sell us one of his sheep. Yes, that is a good plan. Said, answered the hedgehog, and he walked as fast as his little legs would go to keep up with the jackal. When they reached the shepherd, the jackal pulled out his purse from under his foreleg and made his bargain. I want to wait until tomorrow, said the shepherd, and I will give you the biggest sheep you ever saw. And if he always feeds at some distance from the rest of the flock, it would take, not take me long to catch him. Well, it is very tiresome, but I suppose I will wait, replied the jackal. And he and the hedgehog looked about for a nice dry cave in which to make themselves comfortable for the night. But after they had gone, the shepherd killed one of his sheep and stripped off his skin, which he sewed lightly round a greyhound he had with him, and put a cord around its neck. Then he lay down and went to sleep. 
very, very early, before the sun was properly up, the jackal and the hedgehog were pulling up at the shepherd's cloak. Wake up, they said, and give us that sheep. We've had nothing to eat all night, and we're very hungry. The shepherd yawned and rubbed his eyes. He's tied up to the tree. Go and take him. So they went to the tree and unfastened their cord, and turned to go back to the cave where they had slept, dragging the greyhound after them. When they reached the cave, the jackal said to the hedgehog, before we kill him, let me see whether he is fat or thin. And he stood a little way back, so that he might better examine the animal. After looking at him with his head on one side for a moment or two, he nodded gravely. He is quite fat enough. He is a good sheep. But the hedgehog, who sometimes showed more cunning than anyone would have guessed, answered, my friend, you are talking knowledge. The wool is indeed a sheep's wool, but the paws of my uncle, the greyhound, peep out from underneath. He is a sheep, replied the jackal, who did not like to think anyone cleverer than himself. Hold, hold the cord while I look at him, answered the hedgehog. Very unwillingly, the jackal held the rope, while the hedgehog walked slowly around the greyhound until he had reached the jackal again. He grew quite well by his paws and tail that it was the greyhound and not a sheep that the shepherd had sold them. And as he could not tell what turn affairs might take, he resolved to get out of the way. Oh yes, you're right, he said to the jackal. But I can never eat till I have first drunk. I will go and fill, quench my thirst from that spring at the edge of the wood, and then I shall be ready for breakfast. Um, don't be long then, answered the jackal, and the hedgehog hurried off at its best pace. And he lay down under a rock to wait for him. More than an hour passed by, and the hedgehog had had plenty of time to go to the spring and back. And still there was no sign of him. And this was very natural, as he had hidden himself in some long grass at a tree. At length the jackal guessed that for some reason his friend had run away, and determined to wait for his breakfast no longer. So he went up to the place where the greyhound had been tethered and untied the rope. But just as he was about to spring on his back and give him a deadly bite, the jackal heard a low growl, which never proceeded from the throat of any sheep that I know of. Like a flash of lightning, the jackal threw down the cord and was flying across the plain. Though his legs were long, the greyhound's legs were longer. Still, and he soon came up with his prey. The jackal turned to fight, but he was no match for the greyhound. And in a few minutes, he was lying dead on the ground, while the greyhound was trotting peacefully back to the shepherd. <laughs>